Hi, everyone. Welcome. Thank you so much for choosing to be here with me today. Welcome back if you've been here before and welcome if you're new here. Today we have a new moon in Leo. So today I will do a tarot card reading for you. We'll be reading the cards in that way in terms of like new energy, bringing in new things, some newness for you. So I have three groups for you, group one, group two, and group three. Whenever you're ready, you can go ahead and pick by the card you can see, the number, the sound of my voice, anything that resonates. When you're ready, all the time stamps are below, and I will see you at the reading that you chose. Hi, everyone. Welcome to everyone who picked group number one. So you all pick the card, Water Your Garden, Nourishment, Body Care, Tenderness, Rest. Really beautiful. So this is obviously, of course, a message about um, taking care of yourself, pouring into yourself, you know, this watering your garden energy that can literally be like um, taking a bath or going for a swim or things like this, but it can also mean um, more metaphorical examples. So nourishing yourself, giving yourself some rest some tenderness, you know, sometimes when we're going through a hard time or we want things to change, we can push ourselves, you know, we can be like, oh my God, I need this to change right away. And so we want to like, go oh, be more harsh and more intense and more of this when actually most of the time, what we need in those situations is to like tone it down and touch and cool it down and just be a little bit kinder and nicer to ourselves. And so if this is you, it will resonate if it is right. But, um, you know, you, this is when you can really lean into offering yourself some tenderness, some rest, some body care, some nourishment, right? A lot of times we think like success is when we go really hard and push ourselves and do these things in a hundred miles an hour and all this stuff. But actually those of us that know how to rest and know how to relax, um, those, that's where we can really be in tune with ourselves and really know how to, um, show up for ourselves and, really nourish ourselves, right? It's it's easier to push ourselves to go, 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 go. It actually takes practice and work and patience with ourselves to turn inward, to slow down, to to be resting, to quote unquote, do nothing, right? We're in this culture that encourages us to go, 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 go. But it's like, how do we actually rest and stay down, like sit down, relax, stay down, um, give us some, give ourselves some tenderness, some grace, some gentleness, right? Permission to just like, be and exist. And so this is a skill that we learn in layers. So, you know, it's going to take a little bit of time to really do it how we wish, but it's important to remember that uh, nourishment definitely does look like, you know, taking care of ourselves and doing what we need to do and all that. But it also definitely looks like slowing down and turning inward and being gentle and patient and, and all of these things. Um, and, you know, just really this beautiful imagery on the card is someone's in the water, right? So like kind of um, nourishing ourselves, bathing ourselves, becoming more clean, relaxing, you know, like just washing away some of some of these things, right? So watering your garden, group one. So with this new moon thinking about, you know, like what can I do to give myself permission to rest more, to relax more, to, um, and sometimes you don't have to change what you're doing, but you can just choose to be more present with something. So when we're more present, that's when we can feel more nourished and more rested because we're, um, you know, we're, we can be in the present moment and we can fully relax. And when we're fully in the present, we can relax into our body. We can be present. We can do all that instead of just like, you know, pushing and looking to the next thing and trying to grab all this and all that stuff. So watering your own garden, group one, is a message we got for you on this new moon, new moon in Leo. Okay, I'm going to look at some tarot cards for you and then I will do some oracle cards. Uh, the closure reading. Yeah, resting is strength. Okay, so you have the three of pentacles, um, the ten of wands, and strength. So with this one, what I'm seeing is three of pentacles is kind of like work. So it could be like if you have a nine to five job, if you work for someone else, or if you're trying to be an entrepreneur, or get something off the ground, or, um, you know, maybe make your art be your income or something like this, right? I'm seeing that's like what this energy is. Um, this is three of pentacles, 10 of wands and strength. If I didn't say it, if I already did, please forgive me. But if I didn't, okay, there we go. But so I feel like, you know, this work energy, you're pushing and pushing and pushing, and you're trying to control a bunch of things you can control and um, trying to make things happen. And, you know, it's, we can get really excited when we want something to happen and we think, okay, it's going to be like this, this, and this, but then we have to actually admit to ourselves, we're not in charge of everything and we can't make everything be zero to 100 and become this, you know, all these things right away, like immediately, right? So this is really a reminder that 
it's important for us to know when to say when and to know, okay, these are things I can control. These are things I can't control. This is what's going on for me. This is what I have to look at, right? And it does take strength to know what we can control, what we can control and to stop trying to control all of it. And so if you've been pushing really hard or like trying to say, I'm going to manage the outcome, I'm going to do all this, I'm going to whatever, like sometimes, you know, you have to know when to say when, you have to know when is enough, you have to when, know when to release these things, okay, and so it does take strength to relax and um, rest and set boundaries and kind of let things go, and you know, God, God is taking care of the future, God, only God knows what's going to happen, right, but it's up to us each day to take care of ourselves and let go of the rest and let God take care of everything else, and so when we think about this, you know, when we think about watering our garden, it's like what, um, you know, maybe it could just be letting go of trying to control something you can't control. That's a way we can like give ourselves permission to rest is like we keep, you know, wrestling with reality and turning over and over and this thing in our minds and all of this when it's like, can you even control any of that? Probably not. You know, we, we're so focused on controlling these things we can't control that it takes away, you know, these joy from the moments. Um today but it's like how do I let that go and instead you know be present and in the present moment so it is strength to say no to relax and maybe you think it's strong maybe you were taught it was strong to keep going to keep pushing to do all this but you know we know that's not that's not the case you know it does take time to let things go to release things to um you know knowing when to say when having boundaries having limits that it actually takes more strength than just saying yes to every single thing that comes your way And so really honoring that strength of um, saying no to things, having limits, having boundaries, um, knowing what is not yours to work on and what is, that's actually a way you can also water your own garden by, you know, you can't know what you want to say yes to if you don't know what you, what you want to say no to um, with everything. Okay, let's look at a few more tarot cards for you. Okay, yeah, I, I think you got some resistance going on, group one, to this idea of letting go and letting God. Okay, it's just understandable. It's not, it's not most people's favorite concept until, you know, we kind of like get really, we get the gift of desperation here. Okay, but so you have seven of pentacles, knight of wands, and five of wands. So I think, you know, there has been some time for contemplation, but there's some resistance to that, right? So like, okay, let me look at my life. Let me do all this. But Sometimes when we're still, the things we've been avoiding or we don't want to look at or we don't, you know, um, the parts of ourselves we don't know how to be tender with come up and we get uncomfortable and we want to run away, right? Like this Knight of Wands, we want to leap out of here, we want to leave, we want to do all this stuff. And then that, of course, can create some like conflict um, with all of that. So, you know, sometimes the lesson, like I was saying a little bit ago, is it's harder for us to learn to relax and lean into that than it is to like keep adding to the plate and keep doing more and keep avoiding and keep, you know, all of these things. And a lot of these things are encouraged by society, right? We are encouraged to, you know, hustle, grind culture, work day through night, get all these things going when it's like, what did you take off your plate? What have you said no to? What have you allowed yourself to relax into and to give space to? Um, and just knowing that, you know, when you turn inward and you reflect and you look at all these things, like sometimes we do want to run away, but what we are afraid of looking at within ourselves, but we don't feel comfortable turning inward within ourselves, that's usually where we need to put our attention the most, you know? It's usually a good sign what we avoid, what we don't want to look at is uh, where we need to be putting our time and energy. And then that inner conflict of like, you know, if we can't be tender with ourselves, if we can't offer our own selves compassion and love and care, it's going to be pretty hard for us to offer that to other people um, to, you know, in a way that's like genuine and pure. And so like this inner conflict of like, I'm going to be, keep pushing myself and keep going and doing all this versus, um, you know, just realizing like, okay, I need to do these certain things and I need to uh, reflect and, and look at all that is is going to be really important. And just, you know, again, like the, we create inner conflict when we don't know how to accept um, the parts of ourselves that we reject or we don't think are good enough or, you know, whatever. And so it really is, um, there's really a lot of nourishment we can give ourselves when we uh, turn inward and when we allow ourselves to be like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. This is what feels good for me. This is, you know, all that. Um, and just giving ourselves permission to to hold that. 
Okay, just a few more tarot cards. Okay, interesting. So we have um, the seven of wands, the moon, and uh, five of cups. So yeah, I feel like, you know, sometimes when we want to take care of ourselves better, we have to face the facts of the ways we haven't been taking care of ourselves and we can feel embarrassed or ashamed or you know, like this feeling, you know, there can be some loss there. There can just even be like, oh my God, I deserve so much better than how I was treating myself. And so I feel like maybe, you know, the resistance to wanting to take care of yourself is this idea of like, okay, you know, I, I was so, I ignored myself so much. I was so mean to myself. I was so critical. And it's like, for what, what was the point of that? You know, I did that for all this time. It didn't work. It didn't help. Um, so what does that mean? And so I feel like, you know, this seven of wands about, you know, the inner conflict more than these external conflicts, right? This is really the issue. So if we look back at this card, this is more like conflicts with other people. But when we have peace inside, it's easier to be peaceful on the outside in our lives. And so looking at this and knowing that like, you know, the moon is our subconscious here, um, you know, it could be like, I don't want to look at this because it's too painful. It could be too painful for me to look at these things, too painful for me to give myself tenderness. And also it could be not just the way we were mean to ourselves, but we have to um, reckon with how other people treated us that might not have been the most loving and caring and kind. And when that's true, you know, it can be, it can be pretty painful um, to really hold that. And so if you are feeling some resistance to doing that, you know, you can give yourself a hug and you can say like, I love you and I'm proud of you and you didn't deserve that. And I'm taking care of you now and I'm just going to be kind to you. And I promise to um, love and accept you every day. Right. So kind of giving ourselves the love and care and nourishment that maybe we didn't get from these other places where we really thought we did. Um, or thought we needed to. Uh, so yeah, so this inner conflict, you know, when we feel inner conflict, it's because we have some resistance within ourselves. And so this is really just a reminder that it's okay for you to turn inward to to be sad about, you know, how you treated yourself, how you were treated by other people, which was not your fault. Okay. Um, but turning inward and just kind of, you know, just telling yourself, like, it's safe for me to turn inward. It's safe for me to see what's going on here. It's safe for me to offer myself like some love and care and compassion. I just want to get one more card for you guys. The emperor. Yes. Okay. So good. So this is like self-mastery and, you know, uh, this person sitting there very calmly, they have fought their battles. They've done what they needed to do, but there is, you know, um, the reward of, uh, not materialistic rewards, but the reward of showing up for yourself or taking care of yourself or doing all of that. So, you know, when you turn inward, even if it's really painful, the reward on the other side is is there and is important um, in those ways. Okay, I'm going to look at just two oracle cards for you really quick. Destruction, yeah. So um, sometimes we don't want to take care of ourselves or we can have, you know, some resistance to tending our garden, watering our garden, nourishing ourselves because we have to kind of let go of this image or this story or these habits we've been doing with ourselves for a really long time. And so if there is some destruction involved, right, it can be like, wow, I don't want to do this. I don't want to look at it. I don't want to, you know, whatever, right. But destruction, if it's there, you know, destruction has to come before creation can come. Destruction has to happen before you can get to the other side of something, right. So destruction is a necessary part of uh, growth and change and all of that. And then what that looks like for ourselves, but yes, destruction um, and so also, this is the other thing, okay, came through right away. If there is destruction in your life, if things are leaving and being swept out, like that happens, so your life can shift and change, right? Our life has to fall apart. Things have to leave. Things have to change. Things have to be removed so that we can shift completely. We can go into this new place. We can go into, you know, all of that. So destruction. Destruction is, you know, clears the way for us a lot of times more than, you know, is like an intentionally harmful uh thing that we don't need to have happening create your own story okay yeah so exactly what i was saying like you know the destruction of an old belief the destruction of something you've been telling yourself for a long time the destruction of you know maybe a story you feel like oh well, i've i've told this to myself or i've believed this for 20 years 30 years 40 years right what how can i do something different you can just read something online read a story just say like i'm willing to change 
God, show me what the new story is, right? But create your own story. It's just, you can you can tell a different story. It doesn't, sometimes people think they can't do this because they start here and the new story is all the way over here, right? But you can tell incremental stories until you get to this place that's more comfortable. But you can create your own story. You can tell yourself a new story, start something inward, and then all that reflects outward um, for yourself. Okay, I'm going to close with one affirmation card for you. I am accepting. Look at that. Okay. So the sweet irony of life is only once we accept something, can it change, right? So if you um having some resistance to watering your garden, maybe you need to turn inward and like, be like, how have I not been nourishing myself? How have I been ignoring myself? How have I been not been taking care of myself? And it's that it's not um, ammunition to judge yourself, but it's a reminder that once you do that, you can get to the other side and be like, okay, I am accepting of myself. I can get there. I can do this you know, there are things that um, I need to accept so that I can be free. Like, again, the irony is once we accept something, it's so much easier to change. It's so much easier to go to the other side. It's so much easier to keep moving um, with all of that. So I am accepting. That's everything I have for you. Thank you so much for choosing to be here with me today. If you ever want any more information about me, all that is linked below. Thank you so much. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Hi, everyone. Welcome. This is for everyone who picked group number two. So you all pick the card. All pass. Lead home. Inner authority. Intuition. Turn your gaze within. So a lot of important words on this card. Okay. <laughs> but, you know, we'll start with the first one. All pass. Lead home. Right. Sometimes we think, you know, we're um, off the path or we thought, you know, this was going to happen. It was going to be like this, this, and this way. And these things were going to unfold and, you know, whatever all this. But actually, um, it goes completely different or there's a huge interruption or there's something totally we didn't see coming happens, right? So all past lead home is a reminder that there's never um, detouring from your life, right? Wherever you're taken, then that's what's supposed to be happen. That's what's going on, right? It can feel like, you know, there can be a shedding of an identity of just like, oh no, this isn't me. This isn't supposed to be my life. This isn't what's supposed to be happening. But that detour, that reroute, that confusion, right? That's part of your journey. People, only people who are trying to get somewhere get lost. If you're not lost, if you're not figuring things out or doing something different, then like something's going on with you that like you're not moving, right? You can only get lost. You can only get confused if you're trying to go somewhere, if you're trying to figure it out, if you're um, trying to get home to yourself, right? And the beautiful thing about our relationship with ourselves is it's so deep and can go so deep and we can, you know, have all of these things happen for ourselves that um, when we get lost, you know, or we're on a path that maybe doesn't seem like we're going to ourselves when we have, um, you know, delays or loss or denial of something, right? All of those layers, we learn, we connect to ourselves in a way that we wouldn't be able to if we just got whatever we wanted, whenever we wanted, right? I'm not glorifying hardship. I'm not glorifying suffering, but it is part of life. It is part of being on earth is part of all of those things. And so all past lead home is the reminder that, um, you know, it's okay for you to let go and let God, it's okay for you to realize like, you know, despite what capitalism tries to sell us, you cannot plan out, I'm going to go step A, step B, C, D, you know, it's going to go all around, move around, you're gonna have a huge interruption rerouting your life, right? These things are going to keep coming for you and changing your life as you continue to move and change through them. Um, and so inner authority, that doesn't mean like, it's not about being able to, um, you know, manifest the perfect circumstances or, you know, like, oh, this unexpected thing happened. So do I, do I even know what I'm doing? Right? Like we are not more powerful than God. We can't control other people. You know, we cannot control these things outside of us, but a lot of us, there's a lot of like, uh, messaging around us that tells us we can. And of course we absolutely cannot. And so inner authority just reminds us that, you know, how you deal with something and how you respond to life and how you choose to move forward, despite what life gives you, that's more telling of your character and your inner authority and your faith and your relationship with yourself than, you know, if you have all these things outside of you and like what your life, like what happens in your life from that, right? Because so much of that is things we can't control, what we're born into, what happens, right? But there's so much how we respond to things is more telling of our character than like what's going on in our life around us. Um, so turn your gaze within. This is just a reminder that, you know, there's a Sufi um, proverb that says, uh, when, when this, when the, when the, hold on, when 
when the heart weeps for what it has lost, the soul laughs for what it has found, right? So with all loss, that teaches us something about ourselves on the soul level. The soul is doing something. We don't really know what's going on. We It's like so beyond our understanding on the human level. When we lose something, there's a part of ourselves we connect to and we get stronger and we get clear with that we wouldn't have been able to touch without it. And again, not romanticizing, not, you know, all of that, but it is important for us to pay attention to that and to get clear. Remember that, um, you know, the, the detour is the way the obstacle is the way things not going our way is the way. Um, even if it, even if it doesn't seem like it. And, you know, that can be, if you're in the thick of it, I know that can be really like hard to hear and not super helpful sometimes. Right. But um, cause I've been there, right. And you're just like, okay, shut up. I don't want to hear that right now. Right. But it can be a time for you to just be like, okay, if this is where God has put me and I trust God, how can I offer myself gentleness and kindness? How can I, um, you know, reroute myself and, and show up and change and, and do all these things in a way that's a little more loving and kind to myself than like, you know, sometimes we get put in these situations that we wouldn't choose so that we can change. We can turn inward. We can be challenged in a way that maybe we wouldn't have been if we hadn't done that. Okay, I'm going to look at some tarot cards for you, uh, for your reading. Yeah, you gotta, <laughs> gotta face some things you don't want to face to get to where you want to go, right? So we have the star, the four of wands, and the devil. Okay, so, um, you know, I feel like there was this big this big, exciting, like I'm, I'm pouring into myself. I'm, I'm showing up for myself. I'm doing these things. I'm committed to myself. I'm, I want to do this. I want to take care of myself. And then that kind of, um, you know, you created that harmony within yourself and then you were able to extend that to outward parts of your life. Right. So it was like, I did all these things and now, you know, my life is flowing more smoothly. I'm, I'm like kind of in the flow with things. I'm in a chapter of my life where things are just kind of picking up speed and going, um, and we have this wonderful, our devil, the devil here. Okay. Our friend, the devil with just like this big, huge interruption, this big, huge crack and this big, huge, like, you know, again, I'm just hearing for a group too, like, if this is resonating with you, of like just this big reroute, like, why would this happen? I was on this path. This is everything was going great. This is what I wanted. And then something you couldn't control came in, pushed you off, pushed you away, changed your mind. How'd you do something? How'd you, you know, whatever. Right. But so this is, there was like, you know, this inner nourishing. And then you're like, I have, you know, this things in my life and things are going good and all that. And then this unexpected circumstance or situation, something you couldn't control came to be. And you're just like, I can't do this. I don't want to look at this. This is super challenging, you know, big interruption and probably like a reroute of your life, which is like not the most fun or fair to deal with or look at, um, you know, but it is, it is part of things with that. And, you know, a lot of us do have to rearrange our lives um, and we do have to deal with things that we wouldn't have chosen for ourselves. And, you know, life is not just, it's not a, you know, I'm a good person, so I get an easy life, right? If that's, that's how it was, no one would ever, you know, everyone on earth has to go through things we don't like, which again, not romanticizing it, but, you know, when these things happen, this is a skill that all of us have to develop, no matter how painful or annoying or, you know, whatever it is, it's dealing with things that we wouldn't choose for ourselves. Um, even though, again, not to like be super dismissive or minimize, you know, what that looks like or how that goes. Um, but it is definitely, it's part of life. Suffering is part of life and having to deal with that and rearrange our lives is, is part of life. How we handle things and deal with them is, you know, builds our character and builds our relationship with ourselves and teaches us things that, you know, getting, like I said, everything we want, getting it right away, all that. Okay. So just trust, you know, trust your intuition, trust how you want to handle things, trust, you know, what is brought to you in your life um, and trust that you can get through it. Right. All right. Four of pentacles, five of wands, knight of wands. Yeah. So I feel like this thing happened and your three responses are shut down, block my heart. Don't want to deal with it conflict fighting you know maybe being more irritable and running away very normal responses to something that unideal happening right um but this is not it's okay to do that to protect yourself and to take care of yourself but eventually um you know you have to do something different if you want a different life if you want things to be different right so this is shutting the heart down this thing happened i have a crisis of faith i don't want to believe in life anymore i don't believe in the goodness of life anymore i can't change things can't get better this one, and then maybe you get a little irritable, you get more, you doubt God, you don't know what's happening, you don't feel the best, right? 
and then you just want to run away also okay so again all reasonable makes sense to be responses to things it's okay if you had to go to that place for a while but what i'm hearing is you know it's time to come home to yourself it's time to um you know all of these techniques happen so we can try to protect ourselves again totally reasonable totally get it but eventually if you want to grow on the soul level um, if you want to continue to grow and change beyond that it's important for you to turn inward and to say, okay, what am I going to do with this now that it happened? It's okay to have these uh, emotional responses. Totally reasonable, totally makes sense. Um, but eventually, again, you have to get to the point where it's like, hey, this thing happened. This is my life now. What am I going to do with it? Who am I going to become? What's going to happen to me, right? You don't have to be reduced to, these are the things that happened to me. The end, I'm doomed, right? You can change. You can get to the other side. You can um you know, you can, you can have a new life. You can have different things. You can have a different situation than, than where you are right now. Okay. Let's just look at a few more tarot cards. Yeah. You got to stop with, uh, stop with doing nothing. Okay. Not doing nothing. Right. But stop with, uh, Stop with giving your power away, right? You have the inner authority here. You can make a choice. You can do something different. You can make something happen, okay? So you have the Eight of Pentacles, Judgment, and uh, Eight of Swords. So, you know, you have to put the work in. You have to do one day at a time, one step at a time, one thing at a time to clean up your life, to clean up the situations, to do all of this. You know, it's really important to, to look at those things. Um, and then Judgment is, you know, sometimes something that can be, uh, motivating intrinsically is if we say, okay, after this happens, how do I want to say that I handled it? What do I want to say I did? How do I want to say that I responded to this, that I, you know, this thing came in my life and I did this and this thing instead of just completely folding to whatever happened, right? So who do you want to be when you look back on your life? What do you want to say you did? What do you want to say, you know, all of that? And this is don't be small. You can do it. Okay, group two, you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You do not need to be wrapped up in this learned helplessness. Sometimes when something unideal happens to us, then we think, you know, that we don't have power over. We think we're powerless in all areas of our life, right? That like bleeds into everything. That's not true. Just because this one thing happened doesn't mean you lost your skill sets, your ability to believe in yourself, to do things, to make something happen, right? You can do something. Um, and again, who do I want to be? How do I want to be proud of myself? What do I want to say? that I did and that I showed up and that I changed and, and all of this, you know? So how did you, how did you make that happen for yourself? How did you respond to the situation? Who did you become despite these circumstances and these things that went on in your life? And again, not like toxic positivity, romanticizing, but suffering is part of life. And so how we deal with that suffering is, you know, part of what builds our character and how, how we can commit to showing up for ourselves. Okay. I'm going to look at some uh, Oracle cards for you. ancestors okay so this is just a reminder that the first thing i'm hearing with this is <laughs> everyone okay i'm not we're not making fun of this okay but everyone in the world has suffered everyone in the world has gone through hardship and so to think that you are above suffering that you're above hardship is you know a little self-centered ego protective no judgment i do that sometimes it happens as part of being human right but this is just a reminder that everyone on earth has suffered and will suffer and goes through various hardships right and so this is a reminder that your own bloodline. So many people have lived through so many things and that blood is running through you. Um, if you have ancestors in your family or um, people you were close to who have passed away since you've been alive, you know, you can connect to their energy and just that lifetime, you know, and just, this is really beautiful imagery of like the feet rooting into the earth and just, you know, the earth going back up into the legs here. Just remembering like you are connected to so much more than just you know, so many generations each way, right? What you do is setting the stage for future generations, whether you choose to have children or not, or if you can or not. And then all these people that came before you have done something to allow that path for you to open up. So ancestry, ancestors, very, very important um, and very powerful energy. You know, if you just, if you just sit and think about that, it's like unbelievable to just sit and think about how many people had to be alive so you could be alive today for who you are. Um, it's really beautiful and just tapping into that and, you know, this power of uh, what things people have gone through, um, that's, you know, just the human condition and what, what we're going through now and the different challenges everyone faces and what that looks like. And, but knowing that, you know, everyone, everyone has to do something, no matter what that looks like, um, for ourselves. 
time to heal and rise. Yeah. Okay. So this is exactly what I was talking about with like, no more running away, time to look at yourself, time to um, hold space for whatever painful emotions are coming up, but it's time to acknowledge that, heal, rise, get going, get moving, ready to um, go forward with all that. So time to heal and rise. Okay, I'm going to close with one affirmation card for you. I keep the waters pure, really beautiful. Okay, so this is about balance. Um, and so I think, you know, you can see here like the two hands here. Um, you know, it's okay to have the emotional response and this part of the process, right? But it's like this thing, you know, you had space for that and now it's time to like move forward and get going um, and keep the waters pure in terms of like, I, I have my inner authority. I have my intuition. I can turn inward. I can keep my own internal sense of self and my own, these things going on pure. And I can think about what I want and I can have what I want and I can do all this, right? So I keep the waters pure. With everything I have for you, thank you so much for choosing to be here with me today. If you ever want any more information about me, all that is linked below. Thank you so much. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Hi, everyone. Welcome. It's for everyone who picked group number three. So you all pick the card Inner Earth. You'll survive this new solutions and beginnings. Okay, so yeah, I mean, just first of all, look at this beautiful, beautiful imagery, right? Life always finds a way. Beautiful greenery, rebirth, mountains, earth, beautiful, crystal clear, right? So just this beautiful sentence, you'll survive this. Sometimes we just need that little reminder, you know, and a lot of times, you know, life is about unlearning our attachments and letting go of things and all these things like who am I if I don't have this thing or who am I if this certain thing happens or you know if if it doesn't go my way or anything like that right like what's all that energy like so new solutions and beginnings is uh, sometimes we think well I don't know who I am without this thing or how to deal with this because we never had to deal with it before and um, inner earth is just a reminder like just like the earth replenishes itself we can replenish ourselves too and it feels like we're dying sometimes when we go through loss because we have so many um, attachments in ways that we didn't realize we did, right? We think, you know, like, oh, I'm not attached, I'm open, I'm this, I'm that, right? But then looking back, we see that actually, you know, there's so much, um, so much we didn't survive or we did survive and so much we thought we couldn't survive without, but then we do and we keep going and we keep changing and we keep, you know, all these things keep happening and we have new solutions and beginnings and, you know, you will survive this and the you that is born from whatever this hardship is will show you why these things had to happen. And it doesn't mean that, you know, we glorify this or we romanticize or anything like that. Right. But it can just be a reminder of like, I went through this thing, I turned inward and I cleared it out and it, you know, became clear. It became all these things, right. All this was there for me. So inner earth is a reminder that the earth replenishes itself. The earth finds a way, um, you know, the seasons and cycles always go on. You know, we're so silly as humans because we think like my life is just going to be this like, you know, lateral growth ladder thing, right? When we look at all of nature, it's all cycles and seasons. It's all birth, death, rebirth, you know, all of this over and over again. But as humans, we think we're above that or we think like we don't go through that emotionally or spiritually on the soul level. So it's just a reminder that for inner earth, you know, you will survive this, you will be reborn, take some time to be reborn, take some time to come back to life, but you will get through this, um, you will have new solutions and beginnings you know, for yourself there with everything. Okay, I'm going to look at some tarot cards for you um, to start your reading, and then we'll do some oracle cards after that. Yeah, you just got to start, you know, you just got to start moving forward. I feel like group three. Okay, so we have the two of pentacles, page of pentacles and the six of wands, right? So there's something, you know, there could be some indecision here. There could be some, I don't know what to do about this. You know, you'll survive this, whatever this is, right? There could be like, what do I do? How do I move forward? I, I wasn't planning on dealing with this. I didn't know how to, you know, whatever, right? And so there can be some indecision of like, well, I don't know what to do. So I'm just not going to do anything. There is a time and a place to reflect and weigh a decision and to consider, right? But eventually, if we want to move forward, it's just time to make the decision and move forward, right? It doesn't matter that, um, does it, usually it doesn't matter what the decision is. It just matters that we made the decision and we're moving forward. 
And so this is like, I love when the cards are very obvious like this, right? So this is from two pentacles to one, okay? So make the choice and get going and then, you know, start along the path, right? So the six of wands is about, um, you know, just starting to move forward, being recognizing, being recognized for what you're doing, recognizing yourself for what you're doing, seeing that you're doing something, trusting that, leaning into that, having faith, you know, all of those things instead of just feeling like, I don't know what to do, so I'm just not going to do anything, right? That long-term isn't the most helpful for ourselves, maybe doesn't, you know, serve us the best way. And like, again, we take some time to, you know, we have to deal with some of the more immediate physical reality things of surviving something, right? Okay, well, I have to do this. I have to clear this. I have to whatever, right? Then we get on the other side, it's time to be like, okay, I survived it. So what am I going to do about it now? What's, what is the, what's, what is the time for me to do now? What's the choice I'm going to make? How am I going to move forward? How am I going to put one foot in front of the other? And just start going, you know, like what, what does that look like for me? Um, how is that, how is that gonna, how is my life going to unfold um, in that way? And just, you know, the path is made by walking, right? You just have to start, you just have to get going. You just have to put one foot in front of the other and you'll be surprised once you start gaining momentum, you know, once, once things once things continue uh, along that way. All right, Queen of Swords, Knight of Swords, and the Magician. So yeah, you know, this is just, I feel like there's some inner, you need to balance, okay, what do I wanna say? You need to balance, um, you know, kind of thinking, what am I going to do? What am I going to, how am I going to move forward? What does that look like being reflective with taking action? Okay. So we have this queen of swords here and that will kind of create the framework and boundaries that you need to do this. Cause we have this queen of swords here who's sitting down very calm, very peaceful. The hand is raised like, yes, this is what I'm thinking about. This is what I'm reflecting. This is what I'm going to do. This is, you know, whatever. And then this knight of swords, which is a little more like running, moving forward, you know, the horse is flying through the air Helmet's flying off, right? Woo, we're ready to go, okay? So how can you balance, you know, I just hear there's a lot of, it's important to have the balance of thinking about something and taking action. If you have all action with no thought, you might not be taking the action that works for you or that is the best or that's, you know, whatever, like the new solution in the beginning you need. If you're all thought, then, you know, nothing's gonna happen. Nothing's gonna change. You can sit in your room and think about what you want all the time, but you need to get out there and do something and push yourself and make something happen um with that and then this beautiful magician card is just a reminder that you know you have the ability to do something you're not at the mercy of as much things as we think we are we have more agency than um you know we we believe sometimes we can give our power away right and then this is just you know the as above so below and just recognizing like we can pull power and energy within ourselves and and turn that outward right and sometimes you know we just have to survive something so if you're in the survival state right now you can get through it, you will survive it. But if you were kind of like being reborn and coming out on the other side, this is a reminder that you can do something with that. You can choose what you want to do, right? This has all the suits on the tarot on this card. So it's like, what do I want to do with what has happened to me? What do I want to do with my life moving forward with this situation? I'm right here right now. What do I want to do with those things? What do I want my life to look like? Um, and how do I want to make that happen, right? It doesn't mean it happens immediately or it might not happen how, right? But we can really honor um, that process for ourselves and what it could be. Okay, let's just look at a few more tarot cards. <laughs> yeah, again, so I feel like group three, you might have a predisposition to overthinking instead of action. So if you're resisting taking action, please do it, okay? This is the king of wands, um, nine of swords and eight of wands. So again, we have this balance of uh, thinking, reflecting, and then this taking action. But in the middle, we have this overthinking, right? Of like, okay, this is what I want to do, but how's it going to happen? How's it going to fold? When is it going to fold? This thing seems impossible. What am I going to do? How do I do all these things, right? So this is a reminder that you can get to the other side. You can make something happen. Something can come forward for you, okay? But you need to um, balance this action and this reflection for yourself here okay so holding space for yourself trusting that leaning into that instead of um you know just thinking and thinking of you know uh 
well, how's it going to happen? What's going to happen, right? Some people are like, oh, I, I wish I couldn't think ever. You know, I don't want to overthink. But the problem is not um, the amount that we're thinking typically. It's what we're thinking about and the story we're telling ourselves about it, right? So if you're like, I have no idea this is going to work out, you know, whatever, try to switch that to like, I can take the steps I can take. I trust my intuition. I trust my beginning. God is going to stay with me this whole time. God is going to take care of the future. I just need to do what I need to do today to get through it. So just really trying to balance these things in a way that feels, um, you know, just one day at a time, manageable, one thing at a time. What can you do today? What can you do with that? Instead of just like, I need to, you know, have everything solved yesterday, which isn't, is usually not the, uh, the most helpful <laughs> way we, we can approach things for ourselves. Um, actually, I want to just pull, I just want to pull two more cards for you. I just have a feeling this inner earth you'll survive this okay so we have ace of swords and five of swords so yeah so brand new beginning right ready to go and then being mindful of you know who who do you want to be you, not everything can come with you when you go forward so sometimes we can be afraid to have a new beginning to make something happen because we do have to let things go things have to change we have to release things we have to all of that right so ace of swords is a reminder that Look at this beautiful, you know, it's like, ah, this glowing hand here, right? I'm coming to the other side and knowing that, you know, you can release these things, you can get there. Um, but this new solution and new beginning typically takes new boundaries that are new thoughts that you didn't have before. And also, you know, not everything can come with you. So what, what needs to be let go of it can be material possessions, it can be story, a belief, a thought about ourselves, right? It can be any and all of those things, but those things together need to be uh, released in order to to come to the other side with this. Okay, I'm going to look at some oracle cards for you now. Close your reading. The Explorer. Okay, so I feel like this is based on, you know, when you're talking about the inner earth, we have an inner earth inside of us. It's time to explore inwardly with yourself, right? So um, you know, just like we explore the earth, we go out there, we spend time in nature, all of this, right? This is a reminder that it's time for you to turn inward and explore within yourself, right? That's usually the most uncharted uh, part of our lives is our relationship with ourselves. It's turning inward. What do I think? What do I feel? Who do I want to become? How do I want to get there? And, you know, just really, I think this is really beautiful. We have like this representing our third eye and then this representing our heart. Um, and so just kind of like connecting those things together. Um, with that and just uh, believing in the balance between the head and the heart and um, or the mind and the heart and knowing that like I can turn inward, I can connect to myself, I can hold space for that, I can um, explore myself in a way that feels good and kind and, um, you know, compassionate for myself and you will survive this and you can know yourself. One of the nice things about um, going through something we didn't choose or something new or anything like this is like we get to know ourselves in a way that we didn't before I mean, but that only happens if we're open to exploring ourselves to knowing ourselves to being kind and gentle with ourselves right so the explorer rejection is protection okay so um whatever the you'll survive this thing that's been going on for you if it was a type of rejection, um, you know, rejection is protection, right? There's so many things that we think we want and then gives us God so much smarter than us because, you know, we give us one year, five year, 10 year, 15 years. And we're like, wow, thank God that one thing didn't happen. So all these other things could happen. So rejection definitely is protection. Um, and then even this like, you know, beautiful butterfly here we have on the card and then the moon cycles of like, things have to cycle around and change and we have to become someone new. The butterfly, you know, is the new beginning the rebirth, the chrysalis, all of this. But yes, rejection is protection. God knows better than us. Um, you know, anytime you get rejected from something, if you know why, you know, you can say thank God. And if you don't know why, say thank God twice because you have no idea what you were protected from, right? And so that can be, a, that's where our faith muscle has to be stronger than like our ego. I need to see why this happened, right? Some things we don't know why they happen, but, you know, you will survive it. And just, you know, if you really believe rejection is protection, you can soothe your heart in that way um, instead of, you know, just being like, why did this happen? And I can't deal with this and blah, 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 blah. Right. Um, but instead turning inward and 
really leaning into that faith and trusting like I will survive this and this attachment leaving and you know this thing I thought had to be a certain way maybe necessarily doesn't have to anymore so how can I you know get on the other side of this and and lean into that okay and we'll close with one affirmation I am kind beautiful so I think you know when we go through difficult situations, when we have, when we're being reborn, when we have to survive something, can be really easy for us to take it out on ourselves and just be like, oh, I can't believe, you know, I survived all these other things. I learned all these other lessons. Why is this one so hard? Why can't I just get it? Why can't I whatever, right? Sometimes the point of hardship is for us to learn more kindness and compassion to ourselves because we know how to do it in these other situations, but we might not how to do, know how to do it in a way where we're not getting what we want, where things aren't moving forward, where we feel like nothing's happening, where, you know, so can I still be kind to myself amidst hardship, amidst turmoil, amidst something I have to survive and get through? So I am kind. You deserve to be kind to yourself and gentle and, and all of that. That's everything I have for you. Thank you so much for choosing to be here with me today. If you ever want any more information about me, all that is linked below. Thank you so much, and I hope you have a wonderful day.